Okay, today we're talking about heat sequencers. So specifically, here's a heat sequencer we will be using in this demonstration today. It's a White Rogers 24A34-4 double pole single throw, on time 30 to 90 seconds, off time 1 to 30 seconds. Now there's many different styles and types of heat sequencers. Here's just sort of a, an overview of the different styles for different applications. And so here's the specs for the one we're working on today. It has a 24 volt coil. And you can see you can hook up 120, 240, 480 to the contacts. So these are ubiquitous in the HVAC space for turning on uh, heaters or blower motors, etc. So let's take a look at how they work. So here's our setup for our demonstration. We have two light bulbs. Power comes in here on the left, 120 volt AC. Green is ground, white neutral, black are my two hots going to the heat sequencer and then going to the light bulbs. They're separate sockets, they're wired separately each one has its own hot. Yes, the neutrals are together, but the hots are separate, if you can see that there. We have a step-down transformer. Takes 120 volts in, 24 volts out to a switch. You can see the 24 volts attached to the coil on the heat sequencer. So when we turn it on, we're sending 24 volts now to the coil on the heat sequencer. And after it's allotted time, the lights will turn on. And again, that's why it's important to get the correctly rated heat sequencer with the proper timing for your application because they're different. So basically what's happening right now, electricity is heating up a bimetallic disc or thermal disc inside the heat sequencer. It'll physically pop up and push pins and close the contacts and allow the 120 volts to flow across the heat sequencer to the lights. So you have to wait for that designated period of time for that heat sequencer to heat up that, that, that uh, thermo disk inside of it. And it'll deform, push the pins up into the contacts and close the contacts. And conversely, when you shut the power off and you take power away from the coil, it's not going to shut off immediately. It has to cool down, those pins will come down, and the contacts will open. So the light should pop on. There we go. Again, you'll find these in electric duct heaters in the HVAC space. Check and you can see we do have 120 volts going in and out of our heater sequencer. We'll use a multimeter and we'll just check for voltage everywhere so you can clearly see what's going on. Set it to AC. Volts. Touch one probe to ground and one probe to this side. You can see you got 120 volts coming in and 120 volts going out. The other terminal. 120 volts coming in, 
120 volts going out. And if we move up here to our coil, across our coil, we've got 24 volts. Again, 24 volts here at the step-down transformer. And a cool thing about this multi-tap transformer, depending on what configuration you set your wires or connect your wires, you'll get different um, voltages. So just a little FYI about multi-tap transformers there. And then we'll check for the heat with the heat gun so you can see what I'm talking about, that it's heating up. 80, 90 degrees, almost 100 degrees. Now we'll turn it off. You see we've turned off the heat sequencer coil. You can see the lights are still on. So again, we're waiting for that thermo disc inside the sequencer to cool down. And there you go. So you got power going in, but we don't have power going out of it because we haven't energized the coil. So just to clarify, let's grab our multimeter, take another voltage reading. So the, see here, the coil is de-energized. And from ground, each of our incoming hot wires you can see we got 120 volts, but nothing coming out of it. Now let's grab our heat gun, take another reading. See it's 192, 93, 87. You can see it's cooling down more and more. Now let's go ahead and remove one of these wires. Now when we energize the coil on the heat sequencer, only one light bulb should turn on. Let me plug it back in. We've energized the coil on the heat sequencer now. So again, we're waiting for that, that time it takes for that thermo disk to heat up inside there to close the contacts. We'll check with our meter from ground. So we got 120 volts coming in, but nothing coming out yet because it hasn't heated that thermo disk up enough. But we can see, yes, our coil is energized. And there you go, just one light bulb lights up. Our temp gun, you can see we're getting 95, 97. Turn it off. And here again, we got to wait for that thermo disk to cool down. And it'll open the circuit. And the light will go off. There we go. So I'll plug that wire back in. I'll take the other wire off. And we'll demonstrate the same thing again, but this time with the other light bulb. Energizing the coil with 24 volts. Here again, we're waiting for it to heat up. And the bulb should pop on. There you go. Take some voltage readings here. Again, from ground to incoming power, 120 volts. 120 volts going out on both sides. Even that terminal we're not using still has 120 volts. We just don't have that wire hooked up. So I hope this short demonstration clarifies how a heat sequencer works and why it's important to make sure when you replace one to get the proper, properly rated one for your application. I hope this information helps you. 
please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.